how do you add a scanned signature into a Revit project so that when you print your PDFs, the signature is already there? <clears throat> That's kind of a big question. A lot of people want to figure out how to do it. Uh, before I get started, I absolutely have to add this disclaimer. It all depends on what your local jurisdiction, your governing authority, your state uh, licensing act, and even the jurisdiction in which you're submitting the documents all, it depends on whether or not they allow you to do it. Uh, some states will not allow you to do it. Some states will, but the county in uh, which you're working won't. Uh, sometimes the county will, but the city itself won't. Uh, so all of this depends on whether or not this is legal for you to do where you're doing business. So if you undergo this in tutorial uh, and you get in some, and uh, your company gets into legal trouble, uh, it's I'm telling you, make sure that in your in, in your country, in your state, in your county, in your city, uh, <clears throat> whatever, make sure that you are allowed to do this. And obviously that your uh, principal, whoever's signing the documents, is comfortable doing it. Because if you get into legal issues, it's not my fault. I'm telling you in, I'm telling you in advance. Now, said all that, obviously I've got a pretty basic Revit project here. And this, yes, this is the default Revit title block. And yes, it's ugly. Um, I also have a... Uh, what we call that pre-seal ver verbiage. This is the thing that we put on the, uh, the, the documents before they're actually signed and sealed. Um, and obviously this is not what, uh, what the documents are, or what that pre-seal verbiage would show, but I'm going to load it into my title block project. I'm going to bring that in. And I'm just for the sake of it, I'm going to put it right there. And before I do anything else, I'm going to highlight it. And you see over here on this side where it says make it visible. I'm going to click on this little button and I'm going to add a variable. Now at this point, I can either make it a type variable or an instance variable. Um, those of you who know the difference will know what to do with it. Uh, if you need, it, it just depends on how much flexibility you want. Right now, I'm going to leave it as a type variable. Now, you know what, since I'm only going to mess with one sheet, I'm going to make it an instance variable. It's a little easier to deal with. I'm going to call it pre-seal, and it's already going to be a yes-no parameter, and group the parameters into the other. That's fine. There. Now the visibility of this little piece of this little object, when I insert the title block into the project, that is going to be visible based on the status of that variable. So I'm going to save it. And I'm going to load this into the hotel project. Seems pretty basic so far. So far, I don't think we're doing anything that you know, most of you guys don't know about. Okay, so there it is. And it's a, uh, and once again, I made this an instance parameter. So if I scroll down here, there's my pre-seal. I can just turn him on and off just like that. Now, because he's an instance parameter, here's another copy. I can have it on and one and off and another very, very easily, just like that. That's the difference between an instance parameter. If I want to change this to a type parameter, then all the uh, all the the types of this family will display the same uh, uh, symbology. But again, I'm doing this just for illustration purposes. Uh, turn that pre-seal back on. Okay, so that's pre-seal. That's you know nothing new there. Uh, come back around here. Uh, I'm done with this, so I'm going to close uh, this out. And I'm going to open up another family, and that family, yep, you guessed it. There it is right there. It's called Seal. Oh, there we go. So I'm, I'm John Q. Public, and my jurisdiction, I'm licensed in the state of denial, and uh, I am a licensed professional, so don't try this at home. Uh, load that into the project, and it's going to go, remember, again, in the title block. So I'm loading my professional seal into my title block. Now, that, now that's a neat trick. 
I've got a glitch in my family. What about that? Let's just come over here and look at the variables. No. Um, there it is. All the visibility of everything is turned off. I, uh, I apologize for having to go through this now. Should have had this figured out. Get a hold of everything. I want to filter out all the groups. There we go. Save it. Load it back in. Hopefully we're close enough. Apologize for that, folks. And it's thinking, and it's thinking, and it's thinking. There it is. Okay, awesome. Now, just like for the pre-seal, where I have a variable set to control the visibility, I am going to take this pre-seal, and I'm also going to control its visibility. Add a parameter. and call it seal. And I'm also going to make it a type, or an instance parameter, just like the other one. There we go. Oh, I had this once before, and I don't remember exactly what it was. Nope, didn't think so. There's a Boolean that I can I can control this with, so if I turn one off, the one other automatically turns on. I have forgotten what it is at the moment. Again, I apologize. Uh, so I've got a variable controlling that. I'm just going to grab him, and I'm going to stick him right smack on top of the other one. Save my title block. Load that into my project. Overwrite the existing version. And you can see I've got them both there now. Uh, I'm going to scroll down. You can see I've got seal and pre-seal. So I can turn off the pre-seal and see just the seal. Or I can switch them. Or I can turn both of them off. Just depends on which one I want. I'm going to turn the seal back on and I'm going to leave it. Now you're thinking, great. I know how to do a seal. How do I get the signature in there? Well, again, your state may vary a little bit. Uh, in my jurisdiction, uh, Cancel. Cancel. In my jurisdiction, um, I can only place a seal with a signature if both of them are the same digital element. Uh, which basically means that if I scan the signature, the seal has to be a part of the scan. Uh, so I've done that. And I've got that down here. You can see there's just a signed seal.png. That's actually not the one I want to use. That's for something else. I've got a PDF here. Uh, for those of you who don't know it, um, if you open up a PDF, do it this way, I can go right here to File. Now this is this is Acrobat. This is not Acrobat Viewer. This is the full Adobe Acrobat. <clears throat> I can save out, save an image. I can do a JPEG or a PNG. I happen to like PNGs a little bit more, so I'm going to use a PNG. But you can use a JPEG just as easily. <clears throat> so. Seal with, call it seal with signature, and it's a PNG. And you're thinking, I'm not seeing anything. Well, that's because I'm zoomed in. 
if I zoom out, see there's my signature right there. So I'm going to close Acrobat. There's my seal with signature. And what I can do is I can actually take and I can open this in, uh, in paint and actually crop this out in paint. Um, this is going to sound weird. I'm not as good in paint as I am with GIMP. <clears throat> Those of you who don't know, GIMP is a fabulous piece of freeware. Yes, that's right. It's free. Uh, think of it as an open source alternative to Photoshop. It's almost as versatile as Photoshop. I really, really happen to like GIMP. Uh, so there's the whole kit and caboodle. I'll make my selection window. And image. Crop to selection. Image. Transform. Rotate 90 degrees counterclockwise. Yeah, that'll do. And file. Overwrite. So that gives me, that, that overwrites the old definition, so I come down and close this. Uh, I overwrote the old definition, so I don't need to save these changes. One of the things that GIMP wants to do is it always wants to automatically save its own uh, file format. I don't need it in its own file format. I have the exported version. So here's seal with signature as a PNG, and you can see there it is. So there's that. So how do I get this and replace this seal with it? Well, I'm going to start, I'm going to take this seal and I'm going to, I need a distance off of here. Now, if I'm right, they should be in the neighborhood of one and five eighths inch. That's pretty close. That is pretty close. I believe that's the, the approximate, uh, that's a pretty close size. The circle of one and five eighths inch diameter uh, is m most, or I don't want to say most, happens to be the diameter of our professional seals. So I'm going to go and I'm close this down. I still need the title block family open, so I'm going to make sure that that's a little more prominent. Revit, new, family, and I need an annotation, and I need a generic annotation. So here we are. This is just, you can think that the in, Insertion point is at the intersection of the reference plane, so you can think of that intersection sort of as your AutoCAD 00, the origin point for the block of the family. Uh, delete this note before using. If you don't delete the note before using, there's a chance that it'll actually show up when you're using the family. So I want to delete this. And first thing I'm going to do is I need a circle with a diameter of 1 and 5 eighths, which is... 15 sixteenths, I think. 13 sixteenths. So, zero and yeah, 13 sixteenths. There we go. Just make sure. One of five eight. Good. And I'm going to highlight the circle and I'm going to uncheck visible. I just I want to leave it there uh, just in case I need it for something else again. So here's my seal with signature. You can see I've just got an Explorer window open on top. I'm just going to drag and drop. Left click, and obviously it's a bit big. That's fine. Just grab a corner, shrink him way down. And if the size is still a little bit off, that's okay. Zoom in. Shrink him down some more. And at this point, it's kind of a matter of eyeballing it. But remember, you can use your arrow keys to nudge. And what I'm going to try and do here is I want to line up the bottom of the seal with the bottom of the circle. And since I've got this graphic here in the middle that's centered, I can use that as a, uh, as a guide uh, to at least line up the middle of the, of the seal graphic and this bottom edge of the seal graphic. And it looks like I've about got it. So now I can use the scale command and Revit automatically defaults for when you're in graphical mode to a three-point reference scale. Shrink him down. So now this, now this scale is the right size, or the seal is the correct size. So save this, and this is seal with signature. There we go. Save it load it into my title block. I'm 
So there's my seal. Now one of the things that I can do is I can either highlight the seal and I can, re -add, I can add a new variable to it, but actually most of the time you're not going to have a title block that needs to issue drawings where there's a sealed or a, sig a signed signature or a signed seal and a non-signed seal. So I'm going to highlight my, my Revit element seal and I'm just going to highlight the family and I'm going to change it to the seal with the signature. So it's, it, it remains, it keeps all of the, uh, the family parameters here. Now this is something that I'm, I'm really not too happy with. Uh, I don't know of a way to really get rid of it other than you know, fake your way around a few things. Um, but you'll notice that the image, the background image, is actually superimposing itself over some of these drawing elements. Uh, what I'll try and do is I'm just going to move it up and out of the way enough so it doesn't cover anything. So that's all I'm going to do there. I'm gonna zoom out, save my title block family. Here's my seal of signature family. I'm going to close it. And load it into the project. Overwrite the existing version. You zoom in, you see, hey, wow, there's the seal. And it looks great, and it will print. It'll print just exactly perfectly like that. Um, so again, you know, th there are a few steps involved. Uh, if you're not comfortable with GIMP, uh, if you're you know, comfortable with Paint or with Photoshop or with any other raster editor out there, the big thing that you have to, the only thing that you have to do is uh, you have to crop the image down. There is no uh, Revit tool to crop the image. Uh, if you can crop it with whatever tool that you have available, you go right ahead. Uh, but there it is. That's adding a scanned signature uh, into a Revit project so you can print it out and make a PDF. And let's just go ahead and run that real quick. I want to show you guys the resulting PDF. Uh, yeah, let's do current window. Uh, down to Adobe PDF. On here, it's just, uh, I'll call it 24 by 36. Zoom in 100%. And we'll see what it looks like when we're all done. Now it says it put it here. It might not have, as I've got my Adobe PDF driver configured to default, yeah, all output to a particular folder. Uh, take a look at my uh, Adobe PDF settings video, and you'll see how I've got all mine set up. So there's documents. PDF files, there it is, Modern Hotel Sheets, and I did it at the wrong page size, but bum, 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 bum. About that. there it is. I used the wrong page size, but you can still see the signature is there. So there you are, guys. Uh, happy reveting. Do whatever it is that you're doing, and I'll see you next time.